Hi everyone, my name is Justin. I'm one of the astronomers at the Science Museum of Virginia, and I'm here today because it is the September equinox. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, that means autumn has officially begun. You may have noticed this change in season already, thanks to the arrival of pumpkin spice everything. But what's happening from an astronomical perspective? Well, let's start with the word, equinox. That comes from a Latin term meaning equal night. Simply put, it's a day halfway between the summer solstice, the day of the year when the sun climbs highest in the sky at midday and is in the sky for its longest period of time for the year, and the winter solstice, when the sun is low in the sky at midday and is above the horizon for a relatively short amount of time. On the equinoxes, in both March and September, the sun follows a path across the sky that keeps it above the horizon for approximately 12 hours. This leaves us with an approximately equal 12-hour period of darkness at night. But despite the name, it's only approximate. Daytime and nighttime are not precisely equal on the equinoxes. Why not? Well, it has to do with how astronomers measure the position of the sun. To calculate the date of events like the equinox, astronomers track the motion of the sun's center across the sky. Now the sun's pretty big, and the Earth is fairly close to it. So the sun takes up a fairly large amount of our sky. It has an apparent diameter of about half a degree. We measure the timing of sunrise and sunset based on the appearance or disappearance of the sun's edge at the horizon. Because of its apparent size in the sky, it takes the sun a few minutes to fully rise or set. So today, although the sun's center is above the horizon for about 12 hours, we'll be able to see some part of the sun for approximately eight extra minutes in Richmond's skies. We get much closer to a precise 12-hour split on September 25th. Let's investigate this from a global perspective. Imagine taking the latitude and longitude system we use to measure location here on Earth and extend it up into the sky. This gives you the celestial coordinate system. The celestial poles are directly over Earth's poles, and the celestial equator wraps all the way around the sky directly over Earth's equator. On the equinox, the Sun appears to cross the celestial equator, as viewed from the Earth. Today, it's going to cross from the northern half of the sky to the southern half of the sky. Why does this happen? Well, it's because the Earth's axis of rotation, a line between the north and south poles of the planet, is tilted a little bit compared to our orbit around the Sun. This tilt gives us our seasons. Here in the northern hemisphere, as we move into the winter months, the North Pole is going to tilt away from the Sun. This will plunge northern polar regions into constant darkness. Here in Virginia, the sun won't rise as high in the sky as it did during the summer. It also won't be in the sky for as long as it was during the summertime months, so these shorter periods of less direct sunlight give us cooler winter weather. If you wait six months, the Earth completes half of its orbit around the sun. We're on the opposite side of the solar system, and all of the angles are reversed. The North Pole now tilts towards the sun. The sun rises higher in our skies, and here in Richmond, Virginia, we experience long summer days. But of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, the situation is reversed. And while we are experiencing summer, Richmond, New Zealand has their winter. So for two places on Earth like this, the solstices look rather different. One is experiencing their longest period of daylight for the year, the other their shortest period of daylight. Uh, folks are bracing for different temperature extremes in the seasons of summer and winter. But in a way, we all experience the equinoxes together, whether we're transitioning into the spring or transitioning into the fall. This is the day when the geometry of the solar system conspires to give every inhabitant of the Earth about equal periods of day and night. We'll all have about 12 hours to soak up the sun's light today, and we'll all have about 12 hours to explore the wonders of the night sky. In a way, the equinox is a global event. So, no matter where you are, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy your Equinox. Download instructions for this and other STEM at-home activities at smv.org slash stayconnected.